My name is Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Silke Ruhl and I'm the branch chief of the Full Health Protection Branch of the NATO Center of Excellence for Military Medicine, also known as the Milmed COE. I'm going to give some background to the new near real-time surveillance tool developed by Milmed COE. Why we have developed it and how we hope it will be used in the future. Commanders are aware of the impact that outbreaks of infectious diseases can have on an operational deployment or mission. We are all currently living with COVID-19 and it's fair to say that every operation and exercise that has been run by every NATO nation in the last year has been affected by COVID-19, either through restrictions that have been put in place or by personnel who have developed the disease. Many of you will be aware that there have been several outbreaks of COVID-19 in NATO missions. However, it is important to remember that this is not new. Throughout history, military operations and expeditions have been adversely affected by outbreaks of disease. This has frequently led to the loss of large numbers of personnel, either through illness or death. The ability to quickly recognize and respond to incidents or outbreaks of infectious disease amongst deployed personnel is a critical capability. It facilitates a rapid reaction which can minimize the impact on the operation. However, there is currently no NATO tool to enable rapid reporting of illness amongst military personnel. Our response currently relies on medical personnel in theater recognizing that there is an issue in reporting it to the commanders. This routine monitoring of health status is termed health surveillance and currently the only NATO-wide health surveillance tool is called EpiNATO and uses weekly reports from medical facilities. This provides excellent information about the health of the troops but is not quick enough to pick up early signs of an issue. The requirement for rapid or near real-time health surveillance has been recognized for many years. Several national systems have been developed in the past. For example, the French Astaire, the British Prism or the German Resist system, which had attempt to achieve this. However, all have for various reasons stalled and are currently not available. With the advent of new computer software and wider internet availability, the tools capable to deliver near real-time surveillance have increased significantly. This has allowed us to develop a new software package called NRTS, the Near Real-Time Surveillance Tool. The basic principles of the tool are that it uses anonymous patient data to identify patterns of disease, for example, Two people with symptoms of fever, cough, loss of taste and smell may suggest that there is an outbreak of COVID-19. Several individuals with a combination of fever, bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain and nausea might identify an issue with food or water supplies. If any syndrome oversteps a given threshold, an automatic alert will be generated. Receiving this alert and underlying data the epidemiologist and chain will start their analysis. If the alert is confirmed by the subject matter expert, the medical treatment facility and the medical advisor will be informed directly, allowing the latter to act rapidly to investigate the issue and implement regulations. What have been our objectives for testing the tool at the collision barrier interoperability exercise? First, we would like to determine whether the near real-time surveillance can collate and report clinical data manually entered at MTF level. Secondly, we would like to establish whether the near real-time surveillance can integrate with national patient information systems, for example OpenAltha, and automatically re extract relevant clinical data. Thirdly, we would like to develop an algorithm using Aster symptoms and signs to generate an automated alert for a syndrome of concern and test whether the near real-time surveillance tool can identify and produce the alert against the background of routine clinical data. And last but not least, we are intent to generate a message that can be processed by NATO systems and received by end users. 
We hope our tool will successfully achieve all these objectives and can be taken to the next level, which includes real-world pilot projects. I'm Major Matthew Toth and I'm here to talk about the technical aspects of the near real-time surveillance system. We built our tool to be modular, so it can be fitted to work with just about any national system. The three modules handle data entry, they store the collected data and supporting information in a unified database, and finally, we have the analysis module. After entering some basic patient information and the vital signs, the signs and symptoms can be defined in detail using the drop-down menu and then finally be submitted. Anything that runs a browser can technically be used, but we have a purpose-built app in Microsoft Power Apps for it, available on iOS, Android, Windows or Mac, so we couldn't be more flexible with this. The app can store entries until you have an internet connection and encrypts the communication to our cloud. The tool will show the data directly in the Analysis tool after pushing the Submit button. The software collates the information and generates an alert as soon as the data is received. The data is collected in a SharePoint list-based database. The main advantage of this method is speed and accessibility. The supporting tables such as the signs, symptoms or the locations where the system is running can be updated by your admins very easily. And since the data is in the same cloud as the analysis tool, the data refresh is very fast. We can receive data from national systems here via automated workflows to clean and match the inputs to ours, so a nation is free to use its own medical information system and only send us anonymized data on signs and symptoms. During Civics 21, we have successfully tested this, receiving the majority of the data from national systems running the Open Alta platform, demonstrating our ability to process and work with external inputs. An SME analyzes the received information the use of global health surveillance databases to recheck if any similar data can be seen also in the civil community can help to verify the alert. As soon as the alert can be verified, a feedback will be sent to the MTF and the JMAT to make them aware on the ongoing situation. The analysis is done in Power BI, which is arguably one of the most versatile data analysis and visualization tool on the market. The system generates automatic alerts and sends an email notification as well. We can build heat maps for quick overviews or dive into the very detailed underlying data. Once an outbreak alert is detected and considered valid by the subject matter experts, we can send all corresponding data easily to inform NATO's mission systems too. Also, the system can process and visualize any database, like Global Health Surveillance ones, to help our experts in their decisions. Once the alert is confirmed, we can send the relevant information to NATO's information systems, as we have done so in Civics 21. Using OpenAlta and NCIA's IntCore capabilities, we have demonstrated that we can share our analysis and results easily, and that ultimately, our tool can be integrated with current and future medical information systems on the battlefield. After receiving the alert information, the JMAT can start to investigate the situation on site and adopt regulations for the theatres early. The JMET will also brief the commander about the alert situation and requirements for the theatre.